Hi, my name is Giselle Marie Crow, going by Mordell. That's my pseudonym for my author stuff, which is what this channel is supposed to be about. But um, recently I've been struggling with a disorder that I've had for most of my life. And I thought about, since it affects my life so much, it affects my writing, it affects my creativity, uh, the way I think, uh, it affects everything in my life. I thought maybe spreading awareness could be part of this channel as well. I'm here to talk about PMDD, which is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. It is not PMS. <laughs> some people think it's just, oh, you're just PMSing, like some of the symptoms that, you know, a lot of my symptoms were dismissed as just PMSing for a while or crazy woman thing. I didn't know I had PMDD for a very long time. And the reason why I'm doing this video to spread awareness is because even though I went to medical professionals and specifically told them that my episodes were cyclical, nobody mentioned PMDD. Sure, they mentioned depression, they mentioned anxiety, uh, they mentioned, well, maybe you just have bad periods. Nobody mentioned PMDD. It was my husband who diagnosed me, okay? <laughs> And that's because he did some research at the worst time of my life, I think. I'm hoping not to make this video too long, and I'm going to make other videos that'll get into the nitty-gritty, you know what I mean? Like, the details of how PMDD can affect relationships, how it can affect your work, and uh, motherhood. Uh, yeah, so... I'm, tr I'm not going to go into too much detail there because I'm going to save that for later because that's like a whole different, <laughs> whole different thing, whole different monster. Uh, but I'll try to start with when I started to crash, when I noticed something was very, very wrong. I remember the worst time as a teenager was about when I was like 17. Uh, I remember being curled up on the couch with horrible cramps and just like I could not move. I would be in the fetal position and I was complaining to my mom and you know she gave me Midol, <laughs> uh, which didn't really work and just told me to you know it's just PMS you know it's just you just gotta Get, go through it. Every woman goes through it. There were other times where I'd have these episodes of like rage. I think when I was even younger than that, I would think, you know, suicidal thoughts. I never went through with them. I never tried to do them. I guess my mentality was always, well, you know, ending things is just that. It's ending things. But I have a whole life ahead of me and things could get better. So why not? because things are going to end eventually. <laughs> that was my mentality. It wasn't because, yippee, life is great. I want to keep, you know, you know, keep going. So back then I did go through like bloating, like so much bloating that it was painful and would leave me nauseous. Uh, and again, not being able to get up or do anything really, you know, and I would just take whatever medication was in the cupboard, you know, gas X or you know, something. Uh, so I didn't know what that was about. I thought, oh, maybe I inherited some stomach issues, but there was nothing wrong with me. You know, my checkups were all fine. My blood work was all fine, you know, and um, there was one time because my allergies are so bad, I got um, a steroid shot for them. And I remember those two weeks when I had the shot, uh, I was flying. I was like, this, I feel great. Is this what normal feels like? Because this is a drastic difference from how I normally feel. I mean, I was getting up about two weeks out of the month. I'd be taking naps almost every day. Uh, no energy whatsoever. Or I'd leave things unfinished or forget things, very forgetful. Uh, short-term memory was just not good. It's still not good. <laughs> but I, you know, somebody told me, well, that's the steroids, right? I'm like, well, if I can even remotely feel this way without medication, is that even possible? Is this what other people experience? Because then I'm definitely not normal. When I got pregnant, those, except for the first three months, which is basically was just throwing up every day, <laughs> all day, um, the rest of that, emotionally, 
I was like on a cloud. I was mellow. I had no issues. I was at peace, content. I could have just like, you know, stopped pursuing my career and I would have been like, cool. You know, as long as we can make the bills, I'm all right. I don't have, I don't need to have that ambition. And it wasn't like in a depressed way. It was in a like, life is good. You know, I'm okay with it. And I never felt like that a few days out of the month. I'd feel like, okay, cool. I've got energy. I'm going to do stuff. The past few days were rough, but today I feel emotionally fine, just physically tired. After I had my daughter, Luna, I had gotten an implant called Nexplanon that was placed right here in my arm for birth control. And the first year was fine. Keep in mind, I was also breastfeeding at the time. So, you know, there's a lot of feel good hormones when you're breastfeeding. I didn't have postpartum depression or anything like that. Maybe, you know, the baby blues a little bit, you know, from being cooped up all day, but that's, you know, that's normal. Once the year was up, the first year was up for Nexplanon and I had stopped breastfeeding around the same time, my period came back. So that whole year, I didn't have my period. I didn't menstruate at all. When I started menstruating again, and it, it was irregular because of the birth control. <sighs> and that's when things started to go very, very wrong. So what were the signs that were telling me something was wrong? It happened gradually, but not really, you know, because keep in mind, these were symptoms I've already experienced, just not at the level I was experiencing them at that time. But let's say you've always had pain in your foot, right? And you're used to it. And you're like, I know how I got it. And it's all right. I can deal with it. Just pop a Tylenol every once in a while. Sometimes it's better. Sometimes it's worse. But it's something I can deal with. And you don't really get it looked at. Or if you get it looked at, they're like, yeah, uh, we can't really do anything about it. But, you know, if it gets worse, maybe we can treat it. Or something then one day it's your ankle you know it's it's gone up to your ankle and you're like okay well that you know that's a little worse but nothing I can't handle and then it's your whole leg all of a sudden and they're saying you need treatment yesterday <laughs> that's kind of how it snowballed for me so I started feeling these ups and downs in depression and anxiety uh, one of the things that really tipped me off was my fear of leaving my apartment. Another tip was my patience. My patience was almost nothing. I would get very irritable very quickly. Once I knew things were just past a point where I really needed to get help, like before any of this happened, it was when I felt nothing. And I mean total, total apathy. Apathy with my husband, apathy with my friends, apathy with my own child. And that's really hard to say because I love my daughter and I always have, and that's never changed. But I, f I could not feel anything. And you know how sometimes like something happens, something bad happens, you're like, oh, kill me now, you know? Nobody really takes that seriously, right? We're like, oh my God, I wanna die. Nobody takes that seriously. But I started saying it in my head a lot more than usual. Oh my God. This is frustrating, I wanna die. Oh my God, this is so overwhelming, I wanna die. After that, I started saying it out loud and I knew that was a problem. So I tried to get help. Started getting therapy and I went to a psychiatrist. I started looking into Nexplanon side effects because I thought maybe it's hormonal. And I reviewed, um, I started looking at reviews from other women who had Nexplanon implanted and they had similar symptoms as to what I was experiencing. So I was like, that's what it is. It's the next planon. I went to a gynecologist and on, you know, my paperwork, I had explained that it's cyclical. It has to, has to be due with my period, but on there as well, I had to disclose my depression issues, um, and thoughts of self-harm and things like that, which was very difficult to do and very difficult to talk about this at all. She told me that I was going through a major depression episode or manic episode and that I needed help as soon as possible. And I was sent on my way, like, goodbye. 
<laughs> she didn't even say anything about PMDD. My days during that time were mostly spent in bed, staring at the ceiling. Sometimes I'd have really bad insomnia where I wouldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. It would be so awful because I would just look at the clock and see that it's 6 a.m. and I'm still wide awake. Or I would fall asleep and suddenly jolt, you know, into wakefulness again over and over. I couldn't get proper sleep or I would sleep too much. I could be in bed all day taking just nap after nap. My naps could be four hours long and I would still sleep over eight hours that same night. Migraines were also, are also an issue still. I was just passing them off as headaches, but when I had noise and light sensitivity at the same time, I realized this isn't just a headache, this is a migraine. And I couldn't do anything because of the migraine either. I started avoiding a lot of phone calls, disappeared off social media for a little while, probably too, I think on and off, because there were days where I'd be, you know, the anxiety would have me just going to social media and just, you know, sending out a Facebook uh, post or something. And then other days where I just completely shut everything down and I couldn't do anything. And I mean, like TV wouldn't even be interesting. I wouldn't, I couldn't even see, like watch TV. When my husband brought up PMDD, I saw the symptoms and I was like, oh my God, I have all the symptoms, like all of them. Now you're supposed to, there's like 11 symptoms and you have to fit like the criteria and it's, you, you have to have like five out of the 11 to know whether you're gonna be diagnosed with PMDD or not. I had all 11 symptoms, basically. Uh, foggy brain, couldn't concentrate, uh, forgetfulness, um, the physical symptoms as well, the bloating, the cramps, the migraines, insomnia, oversleeping. So the first step to deal with all that was to get therapy, which I had already started, and to see a doctor about getting on SSRIs. That would be medication prescribed to people with depression and anxiety. I have been on SSRIs since August of 2019. My whole family was against it. They still don't really understand it. I think I finally got through to them a little bit, but you know, those pills are bad for you. You know, that sort of thing. I'm like, these pills got me out of my apartment after two months of being shut in. Just like thinking about going to get the mail would bring me to tears because I'd have to go outside. So what's worse, <laughs> taking the pills so that you can function and maybe having a side effect here or there or living all month long basically because after two weeks you're still recuperating. It, it was very difficult emotionally, physically, you have to have a really good support system. If you don't, find one. It's very important. I don't know where I'd be without my husband. He has been the main pillar of <laughs> my support system. And without him, I don't know where I'd be right now. Therapy did help. I was kind of graduated, so now I can get therapy whenever I want. But <laughs> yay. Uh, I'm still seeing a psychiatrist. Things are still not great. Uh, I'm taking like four medications, um, but I still have PMDD symptoms. The only thing left to try is chemical menopause or getting a hysterectomy so that you don't get periods anymore. And that is a decision not to be taken lightly. I'm done with having kids, so I'm okay with that. But there are symptoms that come with menopause. Night sweats, headaches, very similar symptoms to PMDD if you like look at it on paper. But apparently after doing some research, some people have found that they wouldn't change their decision about getting a hysterectomy or going on medical menopause because the symptoms don't compare to how difficult the PMDD symptoms are. PMDD affects relationships. It affects your work. It is a debilitating disorder and it should be taken seriously and more medical professionals should know about it. More menstruating people should know about it. Don't dismiss yourself. Don't let others dismiss you. If you think you have PMDD, 
start getting help. In my next video, I'll talk about how PMDD has affected my work personally. And then I'll do another video of how it's affected my relationships. And we'll see where we go from there. So, bye.